Hello, welcome back. This is uh, part seven of the video series uh, Salvation Through Works is Heresy. Uh, we were talking about the consequences for sin. Now we know that if someone's not saved, the consequences for their sin is that they're going to end up in hell and pay for their sins. Uh, but the consequences for our sin is not hell, because Jesus already paid for our sins. However, if we do sin, uh, even though we're saved, there are consequences that we'll have to suffer in our life. Uh, let me give you an example that probably many people are, are familiar with. Uh, you've probably heard of Jimmy Swaggart. He was a really, really famous, popular uh, televangelist. I think he's still on television today. He had a huge ministry. Uh, and he was very respected. But they found out that he had been with prostitutes. I don't remember all the details. But it was very scandalous. And it really cost him a lot. So, did Jimmy Swaggart lose his salvation? No. If he was saved, now we don't know if someone's saved. None of us can really say because we can't look into their heart and see if they had a heartfelt, heartfelt belief in Jesus as their Savior. Because there are pretenders and hypocrites out there. But if Jimmy Swaggart truly was saved, um, and then he got involved with the prostitutes, and, uh, he did not lose his salvation, did he? No. Oh. But he, did he suffer other consequences? Yes. Yeah, there were a lot, a lot of consequences. Uh, obviously, he lost his reputation. Like David. Yes, exactly like David and so many others in the Bible. Uh, I'm sure that he lost his joy. He certainly got, probably was depressed over the whole thing. Uh, uh, Grieved the Holy Spirit? Yeah, I'm sure. The Holy Spirit living inside him, he must have really uh, felt that... Uh, uh, Maybe because he got caught, or maybe because he really felt guilty, but he certainly wasn't joyful mm -hmm. because of it. And he lost his testimony. A lot of people didn't want to have anything to do with him, wouldn't listen to him anymore. Ruined his name? Yeah. And his character was was attacked, or, and, and rightly so. Um, his marriage? Now, I don't know what happened to his marriage, but when a man goes to the prostitute, sometimes the wives will want to leave them. And, and so it could cost him his marriage. Sometimes prostitutes have sexually transmitted diseases. Yes, and you get that? And uh, uh, so it could cost him his health. His life. Even his life, if it's a, it's a deadly uh, uh, sexual transmitted disease. Uh, so these are uh, examples of what happens when it's a, a true Christian gets involved in sin they don't they don't pay for those sins in hell because Jesus already paid for our sins but there are other ways that we end up paying for those sins while we're alive here and that's uh, it. yeah with uh, the uh, rewards right Venusy of Christ yes yes when we when we uh, go to get judged at the Venus seat for our ministries and uh, God looks at our life from the time we got saved till we die. What, what did we do for Jesus? Then uh, obviously that's going to have an impact. And uh, the things that we did wrong or the things that have no value, those are burned up like wood, hay, and stubble. And hopefully with Jimmy Swaggart and uh, uh, the rest of us, you know, there will be some things will be burned up that God doesn't place any value on. But hopefully we're going to have uh, some gold and silver and precious gems because as Christians we're supposed to be working and serving for serving the Lord somehow uh, after we get saved. Just like David. He had all that burnt up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I'm going to suggest to all the viewers that you, you kind of establish a litmus test. Uh, litmus test is you stick the paper into the chemical and if it turns changes colors, it proves that it's acid or base. But, so, uh, I want to establish kind of a litmus test that we should apply to determine if a verse applies to us doctrinally or not. And the test is, uh, does it conform to what the Apostle Paul said? Because I think we can all agree that the Apostle Paul was the Apostle to the Gentiles. The Apostle Paul was given a 
a message directly from Jesus. He didn't get it from the other apostles, from any man. He got it directly from Jesus, and he called it a mystery and the dispensation of the grace of God. And uh, Paul was given this message so clearly, and he, in his, all of his letters, he defined it so clearly that we're saved by the grace of God through our faith in Jesus Christ, not by any works, so that we can never boast. Uh, so I think we have to use Paul's letters as the test. If something disagrees with it, seems to say something different than what Paul said in those letters, then we have to say, uh, that's, that's not part of the gospel of salvation, that's something else. And then we have to seek to try to understand how that fits in. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you know, there's a verse here that I like to bring up where Paul is really concerned um, with uh, people being deceived from the simplicity that is in Christ. Um, and he says here in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Um, you know, we have this message that God became a man, that He died for our sins, that He rose from the dead, that what He did on that cross is all that is needed for us to be saved, and that we must just trust in that for our salvation. We must trust in Him for our salvation. The simplicity that is in Christ. Um, and there's so many people that uh, want to make it, um, it uh, more difficult to come to Christ. Uh, they want to say that you got to do all these other things um, um, to come to Jesus when the Bible says only one thing is required, um, is that you believe, that you, you put your faith in Christ. I'm thankful that our Lord made it so simple that a little child can understand it. Uh, the verses that we've uh, been referring to throughout this series, uh, the verses we have listed in other videos, um, those verses, just one right after another, clearly state it so, so um, precisely that there can be no other conclusion. It's so obvious that I think a five or six year old child can understand this. Uh, it's not complicated, it's simple, as you said. I'm thankful. Thank you, Jesus, that you made it so simple for us. Absolutely. I mean, it's the love of God that's in Christ, you know. Um, and, and, and God is love and, and that love is found in His Son and, 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 and what His Son has done for us up on that cross and it's the goodness of God that brings people to God and gets them to change their mind about God you know, it's the cross, it's Jesus Christ yes. he, he made it so simple that anybody could understand it and He made it so easy that anybody could do it if they will just confess that they're a sinner and they need Jesus. That's what we need to come to understanding. That we're a sinner, we need the trouble with God, we need Jesus Christ. He is our only hope. And the, you know what? If, if God made it any more difficult than that, we'd all fail. We could never do it. He had to make it that easy because we're incapable of doing it without that simple, easy, easy believism. You hear that? I said it. Easy believism. It's easy to be saved all you got to do is believe in your heart. okay? But apparently, for many of you, it's really not that easy. Why is it so hard for them to just believe in their heart that Jesus paid for all their sins and they're saved? You know, that's a, a, a real a, a difficult uh, question um, that you pose there. I don't know the reason, but God has made it very simple. The Bible says it's with your heart that you believe and are justified. You know, uh, God uh, gives His message that he, he died for our sins, He rose from the dead, and that we must believe, we must trust in that for our salvation. All right. We'll continue this more in the next video.